playing snooker left-handed? Well, if you're a right-handed player like me, then the ability to play this shot with your hand is incredibly useful. So here's my guide to playing snooker with your opposite hand. This is Break From Life. Welcome back, and if this is the first time you've watched one of our videos, then it's fantastic to have you here. This is our three-step guide in how you can play snooker with your opposite hand. Now the first step is just to make sure you can do everything. For example, your bridge hand here. Now mine's a bit weak, I can't keep my thumb in, and I'm just going to have to try really hard to keep that still, and my fingers won't come apart very much but that's okay because this is just a basic check to see if you can do everything and if you can get fairly close then that's all right so if you can do a basic bridge we can give this a tick and we can move on to the stance you just want to make sure you've got the correct foot on the line of the shot and you're not going to be stood too off balance and you're going to be able to get down onto the table without it being too uncomfortable so if you can do all that we're going to give this a tick and move on to the cue action all you want to do here really is make sure you're holding the cue roughly in the right place and give a shot a go. As long as you can get somewhere near playing the cue ball on the correct line then we can give this entire step one a tick and move on to step two where we're going to do the best we can to mimic our regular cue action. Normally as you can see my regular bridge is really solid, my fingers are spread out really well, my thumbs in tight, it's not going anywhere, it's really solid and it's not moving. Compare this to my left handed bridge and you can sort of see to start off with that my fingers are really close together, I can't spread them apart, I can't get my thumb in tight and it's all a little bit wobbly, it's not that solid. So I'm going to do the best I can to keep my thumb tight and keep my fingers spread out as much as possible. Having a very similar stance to normal is very achievable and probably what you're doing wrong the most. Normally when you use your other hand you're stretching across the table a lot but if you can get this right it will make the shot feel a lot more comfortable. I was surprised how far out I was compared to my regular technique. One of my feet was way too far forward, I was barely standing on line, and I had the wrong knee bent. Once I'd sorted all this out, I felt a lot more comfortable on the shot. Which is the point of this second step, creating a base from which you can improve. Which just leaves your cue arm to sort out, so do this. Have a look round, see roughly what you're doing, how you're holding the cue, and what angle everything seems to be at. And once you know this, you can switch hand and try simply to mirror what you've just seen. Remember, all you want to do with these first two steps is just get to that point where you can just put the cue in your opposite hand and go to play a shot fairly naturally. It might not feel right, it might feel like you're all over the place, but if you can get down to the shot without thinking about it too much, you should be good enough to play basic pots. To make any improvements from here, things are going to start to get difficult. You'll have to start targeting areas of your game to improve on, like your stance for example. How to stand in snooker will give you all that information is in the card right now and also on the Break From Life's channel page, along with a load of other videos to help you dominate at the game and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel. To improve my opposite hand technique further, I started running it through the cam system and this helped me out a lot and in only the time it took me to calibrate my cue action to play straight shots, I started to feel a lot more confident playing left handed. You can find out about the Calibrate Analog Middle Aiming System in our video Snooker Aiming System, it's in the card right now. I highly recommend it for anybody who wants to improve their game and become more consistent. And obviously using an arm that's not used to playing snooker shots makes it very hard to strike the cue ball through the centre. So that's why I started using Break From Life cardboard to make sure I played every shot dead in the middle of the cue ball. It simply forces you to play shots in a straight line and I show you exactly how to make it in our video hit the centre of the cue ball as well as how to use it and what the feedback from it means. I said step 3 was difficult and that's because step 3 is purely practice. It's just practicing this technique that you never actually use, doing regular practice routines like I'm doing although I'd recommend you running it through the cam system until you're confident with this new cue action. The answer to this, unfortunately, is purely practice. Two people who play near me who are pretty much ambidextrous, some of the shots they play are ridiculous. They're ridiculously good anyway, but 
you realise they're actually right-handed and they're playing a shot left-handed and you, you don't even fancy the shot they played however you do it. And the reason they got so good at it was because they just purely played each other for sometimes entire days just with their opposite hand. And if you use something like the cam alignment system, for here for example, I managed to clear the colours left-handed. Now, it wasn't easy, but because I knew exactly where I wanted the white to go, and I knew the angles, I was confident I calibrated the cue action, I was striking it through the middle, I knew where the middle of the cue ball was. This meant I was able to do something that was probably almost impossible, without an understanding of exactly where the cue ball needed to go and what shot to play next. And this is why I make a lot of videos talking about the importance of alignment. Because even with a bad cue action that I could barely play a shot with, I was confident on where I'd strike the object ball and confident that I'd get in a good position for the next shot. And this allowed me to make this clearance. And I can't overemphasize the importance of where you put the cue ball to allow you to flow between color to color on a color clearance like this. And I show you exactly how to do this in our video, How to Clear the Colors. Forget left-handed, you could probably do it one-handed if you get the cue ball in the correct place. And if you don't think ambidextrous play is for you and you still want to reach difficult shots, then try our video, How to Use the Rest. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel. See you later.